In this video, I'm looking at the new Xperia Tablet S. It's been out for about two or three months, depending on your region, and comparing it with the existing Tablet S. So first off, just to compare them size-wise, they are very, very similar in size. Um, heights almost the same. The Tablet S is just slightly taller. The biggest difference, of course, is with thickness. So the Tablet S is on top, and the Xperia Tablet on the bottom. You can see it's uh, about half as thin, or sorry, half as thick. As well, the Xperia tablet has Gorilla Glass, so no, not have to worry about a screen protector. And this is now aluminum instead of plastic. To back, the controls are still on the on the right side, but Sony's removed the micro USB port. And now you've got this multi-port adapter, which uh, plugs in the accessories, which I'll go through later, as well as fits into the dock. You still maintain a full-size SD card on this on the left side here. The other added thing on the Xperia tablet is that it is IP rated to be splash-proof, so not fully waterproof. But if you splash water on it, uh, there's you don't have to worry about it. Uh, shorting out and other issues. So when he did recall the tablet back in November to fix issues with the seal, the waterproof seal, but it is now back on the market. So I'm just going to walk through some of the accessories and cover some topics that uh, I haven't seen covered anywhere else in the reviews. So again, once you dock it, the power adapter plugs on the back. The power adapter is now a standard USB cable and on this side we've got the special multi-port adapter. And the dock allows you to turn it into a slideshow, a uh, clock, etc. Just gonna plug that in just to show it again. So when you do dock the tablet, you get gallery, desk clock, and none, and you can change this. So to start off, the Xperia Tablet S is running Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, Sony has promised an update to Jelly Bean in January or February. Uh, unfortunately, I made the mistake of updating to 6B and I lost root and you cannot root it yet. But if you do have a lower build like 5 or 4, uh, you can root it using the bin binaries root tools. Going into the app drawer, you've got all your standard apps. Um, the biggest difference is the remote control app. And in here, you can now program in macros at the top. So macros will record all your button pushes and then repeat it back. So it won't just go through every single step. If, for instance, I turn on the TV, and I know my TV takes, let's say, 10 seconds. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I hit go to a channel, so 7 and enter. During this pause, it'll actually record that. So if you waited 10 seconds here, it'll wait 10 seconds before sending the next command. And you can program this obviously with multiple devices. Turn on your TV, turn on your cable box, turn on your uh, home theater receiver, etc. You've got still gestures as well as the full keyboard. And of course, um, this supports multiple devices, not just Sony. So TVs, VCRs, Blu ray, uh, and every single manufacturer you can think of. And if your TV isn't on there, you can actually learn it. So you can use the remote and program the commands into the remote. So if you have something that's very obscure and not inside the database. Right. And you can actually use your remote and send the commands in and it'll, it'll learn the commands. As well, Sony has introduced new small apps. So these are apps that open up and you can use them while you're using other apps. So for example, the calculator, and then I can open up a web page, and it'll just sit on top here. And of course, you can customize all these. You can reorder, you can clear, and you can add in your own shortcuts. Another feature that's unique to Sony tablets is this guest mode. 
So in Jelly Bean, you will have multiple profiles and multiple users, but Sony's implemented this in Ice Cream Sandwich. And it's not a completely separate guest mode, so one, one user and another user with separate files yet. But hopefully when Sony updates to Jelly Bean, it'll, it will be. So I'm just going to walk through guest mode. So in guest mode, you can choose to give people unlimited access, which is kind of pointless, or limited applications. And then you can choose which applications they have access to. So for example, I'm giving Album and Chrome and the Gallery and let's say YouTube. However, one thing to note is that these aren't separate profiles. They're still using the same files, same cookies, etc. So if I give someone access to Chrome and I have saved my Facebook password, uh, YouTube password, etc., they'll still have access to that. So if you want your kids to not have access, I suggest giving them access to maybe the browser, whereas you will use Chrome as well as the gallery and albums, you can't split and say you only have access to certain photos. Um, it's either all or nothing. So everyone has access to the, everything in the gallery, everyone has access to everything in the browser, etc. And once again, uh, Sony's promised an update to uh, Jelly Bean in January or February 2013. If I go to YouTube, you can see that I am logged into my channel. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're using guest mode. Um, I turned off the password, but you can also enable a password for guest mode. So a second. Set your unlock code, and you can put in a, a password. It could be numbers, letters, whatever you want. Performance-wise, everything's really, really fast thanks to the Tegra 3 processor. As well, no more issues with uh, portrait and landscape. Uh, the old tablet wasn't optimized for portrait, so when you were in portrait mode, it was slightly slower. But uh, now, thanks to the Tegra 3 processor, everything's really fast. As well, you can use a free app like MX Player, and you can play back 1080p MKVs as well as 720p uh, any encoding. So no issues there. If you manage to root the tablet or you haven't updated to uh, build 6, you can install a free app for NTFS support. And then you, you can get files that are bigger than 4K. So SD cards as well as USB sticks uh, through the host adapter with large uh, over 4 gig files for MKVs, 1080p. Onto accessories for the Xperia tablet. You've got a USB host adapter for either a PlayStation controller, USB sticks, uh, memory card readers, etc. As well as an HDMI out. And that was the big thing that was missing from the first tablet, given that uh, Sony has a strong multimedia background. So I'm just going to show how these work. Um, I don't have any of the keyboards or that giant metallic stand uh, because. Uh, I really didn't see a need for it, but I did get these two um, open box from Newegg.com uh, for when I do get my own Xperia tablet. Uh, this is a review unit which I'll be returning in a few days. So first up, since you've got a single multi-port, if you are using some of these accessories, you will have to either unplug or uncap it. Um, the original tablet comes with a rubberized cap which seals it against water. This is the uh, adapter to use with the dock. So the single multi-port again, you can plug in all your cables in here. And just gonna plug in a regular USB stick. This is FAT32 because I don't I no longer have root and uh, can't plug in a NTFS USB stick. You can see the light blinking. And it'll pop up USB stick connected. You can do file transfers or you can actually read stuff directly off of it. Uh, you see it blinking. This is actually my wife's USB stick with all our wedding stuff on it. And you can copy back and forth. Select. And you can show hidden files, importing, etc. So that's pretty uh, standard USB host adapter. The second one I want to show off is the HDMI out. So 
so the HDMI out on the bottom here you got a full size HDMI connector as well as another multi port uh, for power you don't have to plug in power for it to work but you um, unfortunately this doesn't let you daisy chain and for instance plug in both adapters at once so if I plug in the HDMI adapter I can't use this USB host adapter and play something off of it at the same time it won't load up if you do get the giant metallic stand that does have multiple USB ports as well as HDMI and you, and you can use uh, both of these simultaneously with that giant metal dock but unfortunately not with this adapter to demonstrate HDMI output on the tablet as you can see I've plugged in an HDMI cable to the TV it's being mirrored on the screen right now but you don't have to actually power the adapter so unlike an MHL adapter on a smartphone where you need USB power if you just bring this dongle you'll be able to output HDMI onto any TV and it does work with any TV from any manufacturer if you look on the TV itself it outputs as a 720p HD Hopefully that answers any questions you have about the Xperia Tablet S's features and functions, as well as demonstrate some of it firsthand. Uh, while it may not have a super high-res screen like a Nexus 10 or the Transformer Infinity or pen support like the Note 10.1, it does have some very unique features of its own, from guest mode to the universal infrared learning remote with macro ability, the IP splash proof rating, so if you do use it in a kitchen or a bathroom, you don't have to worry about getting it too wet. Just make sure you have the original rubber seal plugged in the back. Thanks to the Tegra 3 processor, everything's super fast. As well, you've got full 1080p MKV support. And on the SD card, I have tested it with a 64 gig card without any issue. If you do manage to get root for it, or you have a lower build, you can get full NTFS support as well. There's a full range of accessories from the dock, cradles, cases, keyboards, HDMI output, USB uh, support, sticks, memory cards, as well as PlayStation controllers. It is PlayStation certified, so you get PlayStation Mobile. And if you do listen to music, it has dedicated hardware specifically for audio for in the Walkman. You've also got all the usual DLNA, throw videos, throw music, etc. Battery-wise, you'll get about 8 to 12 hours depending on what you use it for, Wi-Fi, how bright the screen is. I do use it a lot to read, uh, thanks to the size, weight distribution. And so yeah, overall, great tablet, some very unique features. Uh, hopefully Sony lowers the price a bit, and they find a route for release 6. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, make sure you read the description, and as always, thank you for watching and subscribing.